is the theorem for the bilinear transformation. Every Mobius transformation, Mobius that is a bilinear transformation. So every Mobius transformation or bilinear transformation maps circles or straight lines into circle or straight line. Before starting the proof of this theorem, let's read these important results. First, let W1, W2, W3, W4 be the images of four distinct points Z1, Z2, Z3, Z4 in the Z-plane under a bilinear transformation W equal to AZ plus B over CZ plus D where AD minus BC should be non-zero. Then the cross ratio of W1, W2, W3, W4 is equal to cross ratio of Z1, Z2, Z3, Z4. Both the cross ratios are equal then, right? And second result, the cross ratio Z1, Z2, Z3, Z4 is real if and only if the four points Z1, Z2, Z3, Z4 lie on a circle or a straight line. Which means if we consider a circle that is passing through these four points, then these points are real. And if I take the transform uh, W1, W2, W3, W4 of these points, then the cross ratios of both these set of points are equal, which we have just stated in the first result, right? So the cross ratios becomes equal. Now starting with the proof, the equation of a circle in the z-plane, yes. What is the equation of the circle in the z-plane? That is azz bar plus bz plus b bar z bar plus c equal to 0, where this a and c are real and b is a complex constant. Such that the product of b, b bar is strictly greater than the product of a and c. Please mark this equation as 1, the equation of circle. If I put a equal to 0 over here, then I get the equation of a straight line, right? So if a equal to 0, then 1 represents a straight line. Let's take the bilinear transformation. Let w is equal to az plus b over cz plus d. Then the value of z in terms of w is just take the denominator to the other side. Collect the terms of Z and then take Z common. You will get the Z in terms of W as negative DW plus B over CW plus A. Right? Then transform of 1 under this 2. Please mark this as 2. Transform of 1 under 2 means let me write the equation 1 again. That is the equation of the circle. So this is your equation 1. And now I'm putting the values of zz bar over here in this equation from this 2. So writing z as negative dw plus b over cw plus a. And what is z bar? Just writing the bars over this. That is negative d bar w bar plus b bar over c bar w bar plus a bar. Similarly writing the other terms b into z that is negative dw plus b over cw plus a plus b bar z bar that is negative d bar w bar plus b bar over c bar w bar plus a bar and then the constant c is equal to zero in the next step just simplifying this more further multiplying the numerator and then also managing the denominator to get all these terms. So the coefficient of A becomes. And the coefficient of B is. And then the coefficient of B bar is. The product of denominator with the numerator of the other term. And then the constant C that is the product of these denominators. Alright. Now in the next step what we have to do is. We just have to collect 
the terms of ww bar and writing the coefficient of ww bar and then plus writing the coefficient for w and then writing the coefficient for w bar and then the constant so from here what is the coefficient of ww bar from the first term we get the coefficient of ww bar as a into d d bar right and then from here we get the coefficient of ww bar as if you multiply this negative dw with c bar w bar you get the coefficient of ww bar as b into d into c bar with this negative sign so it is negative b d c bar and then from third term we get the coefficient of ww bar as b bar d bar into c with this negative sign so it becomes negative b bar d bar into c right and then from fourth term we get the coefficient of ww bar as capital c into small c into c bar right so likewise you have to write the coefficient of w w bar and then finally the constant right okay so writing the coefficient of w w bar as then the coefficient of w is and then for w bar is and then writing the constant term that is this right okay which is of the form just writing the coefficient of w w bar as alpha writing the coefficient of w as beta writing the coefficient of w bar as beta bar and writing the constant term as gamma so the form is alpha w w bar plus beta w plus beta bar w bar plus gamma is equal to 0 where alpha is yes a d d bar minus b d c bar minus b bar d bar c plus c c c bar this is the capital one and these are the small c coefficient of w is beta so writing beta as negative a d b bar plus b d a bar and then writing the coefficient of w as beta that is negative a d bar plus b d a bar plus b bar b bar c minus c c a bar and then the coefficient of w bar as beta bar that is negative a d bar b plus b b c bar plus b bar d bar a minus c c bar a and then the value of gamma that is a b b bar minus b b a bar minus b bar b bar a plus c a a bar right so it is evident that alpha and gamma are real and the coefficient of w and w bar are complex conjugate numbers that is beta and beta bar right okay at the very start of the proof there is a condition that b b bar should be greater than a c right so from here also writing this as product of beta with beta bar minus product of alpha and gamma so beta beta bar minus alpha gamma that will give us if you multiply beta with beta bar here is your beta and this is your beta bar and then subtract alpha into gamma from this you will get b b bar into a a bar d d bar plus b b bar c c bar minus d c bar b bar a minus d bar c b bar a bar right and then when you take the common ac minus ac you will get in the brackets yes rest of the terms get cancelled out if you simplify this you will get this result rest of the terms are cancelled out so i'm just writing the result over here 
then negative AC into AA bar DD bar you will get this as the same as in the first bracket BB bar CC bar minus DC bar B bar A minus D bar C B bar A bar right and then because the terms in the bracket are same we can write this further as B B bar minus A C taking this as common and the bracket terms can be written as the product of B C minus A D and B bar C bar minus A bar D bar. <clears throat> you can also remember this. It is very easy to remember this. So further, this is nothing but the mod of B C minus A D square. So that is equal to B B bar minus A C and the mod of B C minus A D square. Now this is greater than equal to zero why because bb bar minus ac is greater than zero it is strictly greater than zero we have write this condition at the very first part of the proof so because bb bar is greater than ac it is positive so these two product is greater than equal to zero mark this as three hence three represents a real circle or a straight line right we get the same condition right as we have proved the condition that beta beta bar minus alpha gamma is also greater than equal to zero for this equation right okay there is a very nice alternative for this also please understand this and this alternative proof is based on the first two results that we have read so the proof is based on the cross ratio preserving property to the bilinear transformations and the fact that the cross ratio Z1, Z2, Z3, Z4. This is real if and only if these four points lie on a circle or on a straight line, right? So let's consider the circle in the Z plane and let this circle is passing through the points Z1, z2 and z3 right and let z be the point lie on this circle now because this circle is passing through these four, three points and also the point z is lying on the circle which means the cross ratio then the cross ratio z z1 z2 z3 this cross ratio is real right so whenever the circle passing through the four points then the cross ratio of those four points is real let transforms of these points under any bilinear transformation be w w1 w2 w3 then by the result one the cross ratio of these two are equal so the cross ratio z z1 z2 z3 is equal to the cross ratio w w1 w2 w3 right so it follows that because this cross ratio is real so this cross ratio is also real so this implies cross ratio w w1 w2 w3 is real and consequently four points lie on the circle because this cross ratio is real it is the if and only if case that is both way it is true so because this cross ratio is real so all these four points lie on the circle in the w plane so w1 w2 w3 and this is w so what is the conclusion that if z moves on a circle in the z plane then w moves on the circle in the w plane so if z moves on a circle in the z plane then w moves on a circle in the w plane the point w right hence the result thank you